Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Good evening to um, you, Elder Griffin. Good evening to um, First Lady Mar Marilyn Griffin. And good evening to everyone that has joined with this with us on this 19th day of the 21 days of prayer and fasting service. Giving honor to God, I, um, on behalf of our Bishop, Bishop King and the presiding elder, I welcome each of you to this service tonight. And do let me say that I look forward to worshiping God with you tonight. Listen, I want to say to you that I was glad when Elder Griffin called this 21 days of prayer and fasting service. Because you know that led us to thinking that we are glad as in Psalms 122 and uh, 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And tonight, as, as the other 18 nights, we have joined together from all places across these United States of America to do just that. COVID-19 has presented us, I mean, prevented us from going into our church buildings, but definitely not into our house of the Lord virtually. So tonight I say the call to worship is simply this. Join us as we worship God, as we stand at the door, as we stand at the gates. Come on in. Show your gladness, sing a song, clap your hands, stomp your feet, rock your head, rock your body, and yes, yeah, stand up and say, I am glad that the Monroe District called me into the house of the Lord. I am going with joy. I am here with happiness, and I rejoice as I hear the word tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Townsend, would you announce uh, who the worship team is for tonight so they'll know? Yes, sir. For tonight, um, our worship leader is Dr. Carol Townsend. Welcome with Dr. Carol Townsend. Then we have our prayer by Brother Billy Graham, scripture. Sister Annette Durham, that would be Acts 4, 23 through 33. Introduction of speaker, presiding elder Earl J. Griffin. Solo, Sister Betty Wilkes. Our sermon tonight will be brought to us by Reverend Harry Davis. An invitation of prayer will also be brought to us by Reverend Harry Davis. Remarks, Reverend Brenda Davis and Elder Earl J. Griffin Sr., and then our benediction will be brought to us by our speaker, Reverend Harry Davis. So now, Brother Graham, if you will come with our prayer, please. Brother Graham, are you here with us? He may have to star six to unmute himself. Okay. Uh, I'm here now. Okay. Are we ready for the prayer? Yes, yes sir. sir. We're ready for the prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how wonderful is your name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We come this evening with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you for your many blessings that you give us, even though we sometimes don't know or realize or acknowledge that you are giving them to us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Before we can ask you for anything else, 
we ask that you forgive us of our sins that we have committed by thought, words, and deeds. The sins of omission and commission. We commit toward you and others. Give us a clean and contrite heart and renew the Holy Spirit within us. You are unmuted. Forgive us and help us be the people you made us to be. Strengthen us in all goodness, justice, and righteousness. Now, Lord, we ask for blessings. Bless those sick and afflicted everywhere. Those suffering from coronaviruses, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and other debilitating diseases. Strengthen them and heal them, heal their bodies, and return them to a reasonable portion of health. Strengthen their caregivers and families. Strengthen those who have been broken or touched by death. Remind them of your promise to never leave or forsake them and your promise of a heavenly home for those who have put you in their trust. Bless our Zion. Bless all of our bishops and their families, our presiding elders and their families, our laity and their families. Bless all the churches that has Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Bless the ministers and their families and the members and their families. Bless our nation. Bless our incoming president and vice president and their cabinet and their families. Bless all those who have authority over your people. Bless our law enforcement personnel, our military leaders, and our first responders. Give them the strength and energy and the wisdom and knowledge to do your will. Father, we pray for our local communities and churches. We pray for our schools, the staff and faculty of those schools, and especially our children. We pray a special prayer for this prayer and fasting revival. We pray for our leadership and all the participants. Help us all to see you more clearly and love you more dearly. And forgive us when we go astray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Scripture is Acts 4, Thank you, 23. Brother. Okay, Scripture is Acts 4, 23 to 33. And then let go. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is, whom by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of the truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, but Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever they hand and the council determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatening and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness that they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own, 
but they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Now, before Sister Wilkes come with the song, uh, I've asked uh, Reverend Jesse A. Manuel, my executive assistant, to introduce uh, Reverend Harry Davis, Jr. And uh, Reverend Jesse A. Manuel, would you do that now? And then Sister Betty Wilkes will lead us in a song. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I'm, ex Good evening. I'm excited to introduce, uh, introduce or present our speaker, our guest preacher this afternoon, Reverend Harry Davis, Jr. Amen. His father was our pastor at Point Pleasant for years. Amen. And truly, this is a, he's, a, he's a preaching machine. That's what I call him. Amen. And he's a pastor of the Washington Temple Semi Church in, in uh, Shreveport. And uh, he voted me in in full connection. Praise the Lord. I remember everyone that said, hey, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we just, we just uh, want to say thank you for being with us tonight and preach the word and be yourself tonight. Amen. Right. All right. <laughs> we up to the song, Ms. Wilkes. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna speed everybody right. I'm gonna speed everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right, right. until I die. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Amen tonight. Let us pray. Our Father, we talk, God, we come tonight thanking you for your many blessing that thou has instilled upon us. We thank you for this day and we thank you for all that you have done for us on this day. Lord, you have been good to all of us. We just want to say thank you. Now, oh God, we come at this hour to speak to your people that are gathered here on this Zoom call tonight. And Lord, we ask that you would bless, touch hearts, and touch minds right now. And Lord, I ask that you would touch me, oh God, right now, that I'll be able to speak. That they will hear and understand that you are a true and living God. 
I ask you to continue to bless this night and not only this night, but in the days to come in our lives. Bless this world, bless this nation, bless our homes, bless our communities. Father, we thank you for what you have done for all of us. We ask now that you help us tonight to be able to speak a word. And Lord, when it's all over, and when it's all given and said and done, we want to give you the praise and give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First, giving praise to Almighty God, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and to Bishop King, C. James King, our, to the Reverend Dr. Earl Griffin, his wife, Sister Marilyn Griffin, and to the presiding elders of the <clears throat> Menon District, A.B. Caesar and his wife, and to my presiding elder, the Reverend Larry DeAnders and his wife, and to all the pastors and preachers that are on the call tonight, and to any conference officers that are here tonight, and to any district officers, and to all of you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, we thank you tonight that we're able to come to speak a word. And I want to say if any of my members on tonight, I want to thank them also if they're on tonight. <clears throat> it's just good to be able to speak a word tonight. And I promise you tonight, I won't be very long. All right. Do what I got, what I was asked to do, and that's what I'm going to do. So tonight, you heard the scripture that was read from the book of Acts. The fourth chapter, 23rd to the 33rd verse. But I'm just going to read one verse of that particular that was read tonight, and that was the 30, 31st verse. And it says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want to just use for a subject tonight, just briefly, what can a praying church expect? What can a praying church expect? Tonight, my sisters and my brothers, I say that we are living in some difficult times. We are living in some troublesome times, some sinful times. These are what I call dark days that we are living in. What can a praying church expect? I have been emphasizing the power of prayer in individuals' lives over years, number of years. Through praying the word, Praying the blood of Jesus and praying with faith. Throughout the book of Acts, the church went through one crisis after another. It is, that's right. Yet, they were always on top at the end. Okay. Always. Victorious. Yeah. Well, how was this possible? <laughs> Through prayer. Mm. Whenever a crisis situation came up, they prayed together. Mm -hmm. Several times in the book of Acts, when the church prayed, the foundation shook. All right, all right. Paul and Silas prayed together yeah. and their shackles yes. fell off. All right. <laughs> Peter was locked in prison. 
in Acts 12 and the fifth chapter. Several times we see that the church was praying together. It is powerful. And the only way that we as a church body are going to see the power of God come is through sincere and honest prayer. Right. Here's a quote tonight from Dr. A.C. Dixon. This is what he said about it. A church that works without prayer uh -huh. may have a lot of activities, but it will exempt very little spiritual power. Hmm. When we rely on organization, we get what organizations can do. When we rely on education, we get what education can do. Come on, come on, Reverend. <laughs> but when we rely on prayer, uh -huh. tonight, yeah. we get what God can do. That's right. <laughs> tonight, this is why I want to talk about what a praying church uh, can do. I hear you, Reverend. Press your claim. In verse 31 of our text, first of all, we can expect answered prayer. All right. <laughs> the Lord answered by filling with the Spirit and enabling them to speak the word boldly. Okay. Boldly. <laughs> with, with a great concept. Mm -hmm. They prayed for boldness and the Lord gave them boldness. That's right. <laughs> As a church, we need to expect our prayers to be answered. Press your claim, brother. <laughs> when we pray, mm -hmm that we want to be a lighthouse hmm. in the community, uh -huh. we need to believe that God will do just that. Right. When we pray for people to surrender their lives to Christ, we can expect God to answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. But it first has to happen when we as a people come together in prayer. That's right. God's promise to you and I is that if we will call to him, uh -huh. he will answer us a praying church can expect answer prayer. All right. All right. When we pray, if we are not ex expecting an answer, <laughs> then I ask tonight, why are we praying? All right. Secondly, verse 31 also is talking about we can expect the power of the Holy Spirit. The results of praying together involves the power of the Spirit mm -hmm. to enable you and I to carry out the mission of Christ. All right. Here in Acts, the ninth chapter, and around the 31st verse, this is after the conversion of Saul, who is now Paul. But the church was really under persecution when Saul was killing Christians. But the Bible said, and they prayed and prayed for the Lord to help them. Uh -huh. See, mm -hmm. tonight, my sisters and brothers, here is a praying church can expect answer prayer mm -hmm. and the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
strengthens, it does what? It strengthens and encourages. Without the Holy Spirit, the early church could do nothing. All right. Mm. Without the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the churches of the generation of this generation cannot do nothing. Mm. Church, we need to expect the power of the Holy Spirit to come when we pray. He will guide us into all truth. All right. And he will convict the world of guilt and sin. Okay. So I say tonight, expect the Holy Spirit to come. We cannot be scared of the Holy Spirit. Well, <laughs> well. Y'all praying with me? Come on, Reverend. Here in verse 29 of our text, thirdly, we can expect what? Powerful preaching. Enable your servants, enable your servants to speak boldness, he says. That was a quote, and I want to give it tonight. That was a quote made one time. He said, it has been said that preachers make churches. Hmm. But I also believe that churches make preachers. All right, all right. By their support and love. Come on, man. The most powerful preachers spend good quality time in their study every day preparing. Uh -huh. The more you pray for the pastor, the better he will be. All right. All right. Especially when you get up on Sunday mornings. <laughs> Pray that God will use the pastor to speak through the pastor. Church, when you pray for your pastor, you can expect powerful preaching. It will not be watered down. All right. It will be powerful and effective. All right. All right. Four, number four, verse four. Verse four. The fourth thing is that in verse 24 and 32, we can expect unity in the Bible. All right. The Bible says they raise their voices together and one in heart and mind. Mm. We need more than ever today in our churches to be unified. Right. In other words, be on one accord. That's right. That's right. It is amazing to me how everyone has their own idea of how church is supposed to be and how many different forms of Christianity there are. For me, it is this way or that way. Well, Listen tonight, I do not know what everybody else got when they got saved. But for me, it was a total change of everything. I thought about him all of the time. I could not wait to get involved in the church and work and just do something for the Lord. I believe that churches really are not praying enough. If we would pray together, we would be unified together. When the church prays together, we can expect unity in teaching, unity in worship, and in praise. Unity in outreach, in mission. And finally, in chap back in chapter 2, around that 47 verse, we have to go back to this verse in Acts 2. The Bible says the early church had a powerful influence in the community. In chapter 1, verse 8, 
you will he says you will receive power. But the only way for them to have this influence and to have this power was to pray together. But for the most part, it was the lives they were living in front of the people. The church had answered prayer. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They had powerful preaching and they were unified. And as a result of all these things, they made an impact on the communities around them. So I say to the, all of us tonight, and you and I, God is looking for churches today that have all the ingredients of the early church. If some of these churches were not here, what would people say that they miss? Think about that for a moment. I miss that church being there because of what? What kind of influence do we have in the community. If the church was not here, why would you miss it? If we pray together, we can expect a powerful influence, not only in the community, but in our families and the lives that we are around each day, each and every day. So I say again, God will not bring new people into a church that cannot disciple them into mature Christians. The expectation level of churches and individuals today is not very high. When we come to church, most of the time it is just something else that we can mark off our list. Well. But the word of God holds true. As we have a promise that God will answer our prayers. That's right. And we have the promise just as the early church did that we can be powerful and effective in everything we do. Right. Scripture tells us in verse 33, great power and great grace was upon them all. So I come tonight as I get ready to close. I want to challenge you tonight. And it is an easy challenge. I say it's an easy challenge. All right. Let us pray more together. Thank you, uh, Dr. Earl Griffin, for having this 21 day of fasting and praying. Amen. I think that most churches need to be able to come together and pray together. Yeah. So if we pray together, we need to pray for our churches. Uh -huh. We need to pray for the church to make an impact. Yes in our communities. We need to pray that our church will make an impact for our nation. Uh -huh. We need to pray that our church will make an impact for our world. Yeah. So I said tonight, we need to pray for unity. Yeah. And not only that, but we need uh, to pray for our pastors. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you tonight, uh, but I know that prayer will yeah. change things. Yes. Yeah, prayer will bring a wandering child back home. Yeah. Prayer will change any situation. Yeah. I know if we come uh -huh. together in prayer, yeah. the Lord will answer prayer. Come on, and I'm right. talking about sincere and honest prayer. Come on, right. God will answer your prayers and my prayers. Yeah. Today I declare my sisters and my brothers, we need prayer for our, our president-elect and our president, vice president-elect also. They will be uh, installed on tomorrow. Uh -huh. We don't know what the future holds, but 
but I believe uh, prayer will change things. Uh, yeah. I'm so glad uh, I know who Jesus is. Uh, yeah. He is my Alpha and my Omega. He's my bright and my morning star. Yeah. He's my yeah. bread in a starving land. Uh, he's my water in dry places. Yeah. May God bless you and may God keep you. Is my prayer tonight. Amen. What can a praying church respect? There's power when people get together. Believers get together and pray together. God will hear and answer prayer. Thank you tonight for your listening ear. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you tonight. May God Amen. bless you. And may God keep you. Here's my prayer. Amen. 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 Reverend Davis, we just thank you. Thank, praise God for that word. A praying church. A praying church. When the church prays, amen. And while you're just, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit is just moving and we can just hear it just moving in you, would you just go on and give the invitation? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Davis. The doors of the church is never closed. They're always open. Mm. Amen. They've been open for some two, over 2,000 years ago when Jesus went to Calvary and died for the world's sins. God, yeah. The invitation was given then and it's still given today. Mm -hmm. But I've been asked to extend the privilege. There's someone on the call tonight that might not know Jesus and the part of your sins. If you're here, this could be your night that you will surrender your all in all to him tonight. He's waiting with open arms. That may be someone who has backslidden. We invite you to come. The doors are always open, but Jesus stands waiting all you have to do is just come and make a confession to him. He's willing to forgive you. He won't hold it against you. No matter what you've done and what you've done now, he's always waiting. If you're on tonight, will you come? Will you come? There's room at the cross. We've done what we was asked to do, but yet there's still room. Amen. If not tonight, it could be tomorrow that you may want to do, do that tomorrow, whatever case, but let God lead you. All Amen. right, I believe I'm to, am I to pray now? Amen. Are there any names to be, uh, uh, Reverend Davis, just uh, before Reverend Manuel, do we have any new names being entered in the chat box? And if you, if so, can you give us the number? Yes, ma'am. There are four names, and I'm a, I would like to call them tonight. Uh, Samantha Willis Smith, the Lawson family, Mineral Springs and Robinson Chapel, CME Church, Derek Michael Gibson with COVID. Uh, I'll pray with a praise report. I would like to give these praise reports. I want to thank everyone for their kindness and patience as I'm doing this uh, prayer list. I'll get you to look at the names and see that I spelled the names right. I thank you for your kindness and your patience with me. Amen. I have a praise report from Sister Davida Emerson. So thanks for having my family on the prayer list. My mm -hmm. sister Adria is out of the hospital and has tested negative for COVID-19. We need to praise God right there. Amen. Hallelujah. But still suffering some after effects. My niece and great niece and nephews are COVID free with no other effects. Praise God. We yeah. thank you for the text. And I got five or six texts, but I'm going to read them later. Amen. But we are getting praise report. Hallelujah. That God is healing through the prayers of the righteous of Bellis Month. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm through. And we had 69 tonight. All right. In our Amen. listening audience. When the church prays, Reverend Davis, thank you so much for that word. We see the power of prayer. Reverend Davis, we're in your hands as you carry us to the throne. Amen. Prayer.
thank you all so much once again. And I want to say to you all, may God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. We thank you, uh, Elder, uh, allowing us to be able to speak on tonight. We thank you to the house. We pray for you and your family tonight. And God will continue to bless you. And, and all of you all that's on the call, we thank you so much that you be blessed through the incoming, upcoming days in your life that you your, you and your family will be blessed. Tomorrow is, is, is a day that uh, Biden and Harris will be installed on tomorrow. I plan to watch it and I wish I could be there, but I, I can't. But my prayer is for them that they'll be blessed and be successful in their endeavor to lead this world, this country back to where it needs to be. All right, is there anything Amen. else? Reverend Davis, I have one more thing. Uh, please keep yes, Reverend man. Eric Peoples in prayer as he lay rest his mom tomorrow in North Carolina. All right. Amen. That entire family. Thank you so much, Reverend Manuel, for reminding us of that. Thank, Thank you, Sister Brooks. Amen. Man. All right. Amen. There's nothing else? That's it, sir. All right. Hmm. Eternal God, we come now at the close of this service. We thank you for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for being with us on tonight. And Lord, we pray uh, once again to you that if there was anything that was done that was not pleasing to you, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. Don't hold it against us. But it was not our intent to do anything to displease you. But Lord, I ask that you forgive us all for our sins Amen. that we may have committed during this week or this day. Amen. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Bless us and keep us and hold us in your hands. Amen. Thank you now, oh God, for those that was on this uh, Zoom call on tonight. Amen. We pray that something was said in their, to them tonight that would help them to go through life journey, to want to do better in their lives and commit their lives to you. Amen. Thank you, oh God, for allowing me to be able to speak for you on tonight. Yes, Lord. And Lord, it was not for me, but it was because of you. And we just thank Amen. you for what you have done. And Lord, as we close out tonight, we pray that we'll have a good night rest, good night sleep. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We all say it. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Reverend Davidson. Our preacher tomorrow night is going to be Reverend Laquita Anderson from uh, the Ebenezer Baptist Church. I mean, a Ebenezer Church. Amen, Reverend. <laughs> Pastor Anderson. Amen. Amen.